Hey everyone, welcome back to the final week of Striper season updates with On The Water. I'm your host, Matt Hefner, and since April 1st, we've been bouncing around the Striper coast following the migration across the Northeast. Today is July 1st, which means that the migration is all but ended with the exception of a few ocean-bound schools of bass still moving slightly north. We've covered everything striped bass related this spring, and today we'll take a brief recap of the places we've been and the knowledgeable figures we've spoken to. Remember, you can always go back and watch one of the updates you might have missed so you stay informed and learn from the strategies and techniques used by some of the Northeast's finest anglers. Let's take a quick walk through some of the guests we had along the way and a couple of the key points each of them touched on for staying on the bite during the course of the season. During week one on April 1st, I spoke to Captain Brian Williams of Badfish Charters in Ocean City, New Jersey. Brian spent the beginning of the season targeting bass in the back bay with light tackle, following little schools of bait, looking for birds, and fishing with light tackle and small paddle tails. In week two, we bumped up the coast just a tiny bit from southern to northern New Jersey to talk to John Oswald. John is our Northern New Jersey report writer and on the water contributing author. He and I spoke about Raritan Bay and fishing around the rivers in the early season, flutter spoons and the bunker bite around Raritan Bay, and John even forecasted the summer surf bite, referencing a piece he wrote for On the Water magazine about fishing sand fleas off the beach in June. During week three, we skipped over a couple states and bumped up the coast to Martha's Vineyard in Massachusetts, where I spoke with Captain Stavros Vigilis. Stavros basically predicted the striper's arrival on Martha's Vineyard before speaking about the transition from fishing around salt ponds and rivers to fishing out front with the first push of migratory bass. In week four, I headed back down to New York to talk to Kevin Ryan. Kevin's a kayak angler and owner of Todd Candy Jigs in New York City. Kevin and I went into some of the proper techniques for releasing striped bass from a kayak before talking about the presence of bunker and big bait in the New York bite area, which is right around Raritan and Jamaica Bay. In week five, we headed just east of New York City and spoke to Tim Regan. Tim Regan is the Long Island Fishing Report writer, New York surf fishing guide, a drone pilot, and videographer on Long Island's South Fork. Tim and I spoke about matching the hatch and paying attention to bait features and characteristics, and how reading the beach and understanding sandy structure and how it moves with the wind and currents can help you locate bass all season long. In week six, I headed up the coast to Rhode Island to speak to Dustin Stevens, a kayak angler and owner of Rhode Island Kayak Fishing Adventures. Dustin and I talked about fishing artificial lures versus bait from a kayak and how to locate bait using your electronics to your advantage. In week seven, I headed back down to Long Island to get a different perspective from the South Fork and spoke to John Skinner, author, YouTuber, online fishing course mentor, and surf caster on the North Shore of Long Island. John and I talked about fishing with bucktail jigs and understanding the weight and characteristics of a bucktail jig that will cater to where you're fishing. In week eight, we headed right back up to New England so I could speak with AJ Kutz, co-owner of Red Top Sporting Goods in Buzzards Bay. AJ and I talked about jigging in top water in the Cape Cod Canal, as well as Cape Cod Canal fishing etiquette and the adequate gear, which is massively important for catch and release in the strong currents and deep water of the Cape Cod Canal. In week nine, we headed back south to check in on New Jersey and I spoke to Jenny Ackerman, a surf caster, employee, and rod building apprentice at Grumpy tackle in New Jersey. Jenny and I talked about fishing clams in the surf for stripers and the ideal qualities in a striper fishing rod for inshore surf purposes. As we headed into June for week 10, I was back up in Connecticut talking to Captain Joe DiOrio of DiOrio Guide Service in Eastern Connecticut on the Long Island Sound. Joe and I spoke about fishing with topwater plugs like the dock and the importance of cadence consistency in your retrieval. We also spoke about finding bunker and how it's the key to locating big bass this season. Then, in week 11, I had a similar conversation with Peter Jenkins. Peter is the board chair of the American Saltwater Guides Association and he's the owner of Saltwater Edge in Middletown, Rhode Island. Saltwater Edge specializes in fly fishing, light tackle, and surf casting. Peter and I talked about all that, as well as indicators of bass transitioning to structure after following bait up the coast and around Narragansett Bay. In week 12, I spoke to On the Water's very own Jimmy Fee, a surf caster, the editor of the On the Water magazine, TV host for On the Water's Angling Adventures, and podcaster for the new On the Water podcast. He's a man of many hats. Jimmy and I spoke about the wide array of bait fish around Cape Cod and how you can locate bass by understanding water temperatures and water movement as the season progresses. Lastly, in week 13, I went all the way up the Striper Coast to Portland, Maine and spoke to Captain Lou Torado of Diamond Pass Outfitters. Lou and I spoke about fishing top water for bass, fly fishing for striped bass, and how keeping it simple is sometimes the most important thing. Don't overcomplicate your baits. If there are a few main takeaways from this entire migration, it's that bunker, and big baits are the key to big bass, 
Understanding water temperatures and water movement is hugely important when trying to stay on a bass bite throughout the course of the season. As important as bunker are though, we learned that there's a lot of unique techniques that people use depending on where you are across the Striper Coast, and some of those skills and techniques are transferable. I don't know about you, but I'm going to try digging up some of my own sand fleas this year and throwing them on a circle hook. Overall, getting all these different perspectives and speaking to all these different anglers, shop owners, guides, and more, having heard so many perspectives from different communities across the Striper Coast, I've been able to reflect quite a bit on my own striper striper fishing this season. I hope that you were able to take something away from at least one of these striper season updates because I know I certainly have some new lures to try and techniques to practice for the remainder of the season. If you have any questions about striped bass fishing going forward, don't hesitate to reach out to us by leaving a comment below or checking out one of our prior video updates. For more content about striped bass, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, check out onthewater.com, follow us on social media at On The Water Magazine, and check out our new On The Water podcast. I hope you have a safe and stripe-filled summer. Thanks again for tuning in to all of the 2022 spring striper season updates with On the Water.